the board meeting. Of course, I'm going to be their last board meeting. Until <laughs> they run again. Yeah, go ahead. So, I want to open up this. Uh, uh, everybody knows we got voting going on. I want to make sure some places you might say vote, vote often. But here we want to uh, really want to hear what the members have to say. We want to know that we are representing you and your interests. Uh, this rate of uh, recent rate of participation, seventy-eight percent. No reason that can't be hundred percent. Let's just tell everybody that you talk to. We need your vote. To get it out. We have a great slate of board candidates. Uh, really, the nominating committee has done a great job. Identifying qualified people and helping convince them that they need to be uh, participate in the leadership of their club. Appreciate that very much. Uh, voting on the 15th card path is uh, something that uh, we hear every year since I've been here. Now we need the improved card path, and that project's now being brought uh, forward where we can fund it. We'll talk a little bit more about that project, but again, we need your vote. Please. Uh, Ask the question. Uh, uh, staff, ask the question. People signing up at the pro shop, ask the question. Food and beverage, make sure they got a ballot at the end. Those that can vote. Uh, all the help that we can get just to make sure we get a good representation. So stand out, sets so my Really appreciate the three board members that have served their time. I did some excellent leadership, some good insight, good cultural understanding of where the club has been, what we're trying to get to. Uh, their contribution will show up years to the community. Thank Dan, Kelly, and Mike. They are their last duty for me to report for their committees on the progress that we've made over the last year. So we've got a little bit of a homework assignment for October 11th to uh, kind of highlight what those improvements have been and changes they've seen. And also uh, a good opportunity for us to thank them. And I really appreciate people to, uh, to come out, have a drink on them. Oh yeah, on you. Uh, thank them for their service. Not always an easy job. There's been a lot of transition by the time and period that they've been on the board. I appreciate that they have stuck to it, made a three year commitment, and they've all fulfilled their three year commitment to themselves and to the clubs. It's not always the case, but in a case where they can, they have committed that amount of time to their expertise and help. Had busy tournament here this year. Uh, lots of successes. Uh, also asked members to for us to look at the tournament schedule, the type of tournaments, the registration process, and make sure that uh, the uh, tournaments are uh, meeting our guidelines, meeting the expectation of our members. Between GTNH board and management team, as well as volunteer members that have uh, spoke up. By their history, by their experiences, uh, working on this issue, we've uh, reported back to us about some uh, actions that uh, we want to share with you to address the. Uh, yeah, can we go back? To I'm sorry. Just go ahead. Okay. Okay. Um, so I make a motion Really hard to hear you guys. Got a first and second to approve the minutes. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So good. Okay, Bob. 
Um, also like to report, you know, key decisions uh, that were taken uh, between board meetings. Um, first of all, we reviewed um, the bulk of the club documents, including the fiduciary policy, our governance guidelines, our strategic plan. Um, we have no material changes other than, you know, some corrections and clarifications and typos to those documents uh, for this year. We're also establishing a uh, protocol and schedule on uh, how often specific documents need to be reviewed uh, and by whom uh, on the board and, and staff. And uh, we'll be uh, publishing that uh, in another month or so. And it will help with our integration of our new board members that come on board at the October meeting. Uh, we also approved an initiation fee increase uh, effective immediately. Um, that changes the, the full initiation fee to 17,000, junior 12,000, social 1,000, and professional 8,500 effective immediately. We will continue to review um, uh, the appropriate level of our initiation fees as we uh, fill up our membership, which we are very close to doing, and in comparison with uh, our competition in the competitive market set for uh, clubs of our type in the area. In addition, we uh, approved uh, two authorizations for expenditure, um, a water trailer that will allow our grounds crew to do uh, watering in uh, remote areas of the course. Um, that was a purchase of $2,500. And then uh, approval for development of a practice bunker out of the Max's practice facility on the other side of the lake. Um, our current contractor still has their equipment here and uh, we can avoid a, another mobilization fee and take advantage that their equipment is here and, and do that at a lower cost and add an amenity for our, our members to use um, while we wait for the new practice facility to open. That's all I have. Thank you, Bob. Mike, are you there? I am here. Okay, so um, we are asking the members for approval to go forward with the whole 15 car path. This is a drawing showing that it will start up at Perry Park Boulevard uh, at the intersection where 12 green and 15 T boxes. It'll tie into the existing concrete path that was poured um, for, for number 12, continue down tying into number 11 and continuing across in front of the number 11 T box, again, to tie into existing concrete there. So uh, it's a project that the board recommends unanimously approval and we hope the membership can do that if we're able to get that approval um, we will have the uh, work performed either in the fourth quarter of this year or first quarter of next year depending on a variety of things including contractor availability weather a variety of other things so the, the board unanimously recommends going forward the budget not to exceed is $150,000 because contractors today will not guarantee um, their numbers for more than two or three weeks. Typically, we do have, normally we carry about a 10% contingency in the number, and this time we've carried a, a higher contingency just in case because um, we're not sure where the number is going to be when we get ready to do the work. And any questions on that? Voting is will close on October 11th, so we hope everybody gets out there um, and provides their input and provides their vote on this project because we think it'll be a big addition to the course. Uh, just as a kind of a catch up, here's a list of projects that actually were delivered or underway in 2023. It's a fairly long list and we've been thrilled that we've been able to undertake many projects that have been needed for, for a very long time at the club and some new projects that have come up this year. So I'm not going to run through the list, but um, 
your your management team has worked very hard this year to accomplish all these projects going forward. Okay, that's it. Okay. Okay. Oh. There's a room here tonight. Okay, um, this is Lori. I'll give you the finance update. Once again, I stand in the back and I can't really see the numbers. <laughs> it's never bad time. <laughs> that happens when you look at spreadsheets with tiny little numbers all day. Um, so anyways, through August, we have really good um, year-to-date numbers again, ahead of budget. Um, 147,000. Um, we're seeing better than budget across all areas. It's because of our member count. Um, our pro shop has been strong with guest cart and cart fees, um, also in merchandise sales. For the Bedbridge, it's a really strong year, um, almost break even um, so far. All the events, all the um, you know nightly reservations, everything that we're bringing. Um, to the table, literally. Um, we have a forecast that we've put together. We changed a few expenses. We um, didn't really project additional revenues, but I think we will have them in September and October, and then we'll see how the, when the snow starts. But um, we still have plenty of opportunity for everyone to come in November and December. So um, we had a budget of 73,000 and now potentially 156,000. So just like we've done in the past couple of years, we'll look at putting a percentage of that to capital. We'll put some to our cash reserve. We'll allow our department teams to take a few things operational to help support their teams and members give a better member experience. Um, so uh, it's another uh, great year. So um, we're going to keep moving forward doing as we have. And we don't have another slide, but Dan, do you have anything that you want to add? Or no, I, I guess I just want to emphasize how, how great that it's been in terms of that all of the, you know, the key functional areas, you know, the uh, pro shop membership, food, uh, food and beverage in the courts um, are all better than budget, right? Uh, so when when so that's a pretty good situation to have, you know. I'll I'll I'll, I'll think about a couple of those. First off, you know, um, as as Lori talked about, you know, Keith. As far as we've actually had a, a great you know uh, member support in terms of guest fees this, this year. That's what driving a lot of the over performance um, in the in the pro shop as well as carts. You know, give Chef a um, a shout out. Because we were actually early in the year way behind, you know, behind budget with F and D, and now, as you can see up there, you know, they're over fifty thousand dollars ahead of budget. So, uh, so great work, and in particular, Chef done a really good job of um, doing a lot more competitive bidding for a lot of our uh, food products, and so we've so we've really done a good job of managing our cost of goods sold, which is a really key in, ingredient in any uh, F and D operation. And with that said, I will move to approve the August financials. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Um, I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, no, nothing on finance. Everybody, I'm here to highlight Jack Boyd. Um, he is our featured employee of the month. Perry Park Country Club recognizes Jack Boyd as the featured employee of the month. From from Jack, Jack is 15 years old. He currently he is currently in high school, and Jack has been at the club just a little bit over three months as a dishwasher back there. Fun fact about Jack here at Perry Park. Um, he, his hobbies um, he likes to do is to go skateboarding as much as possible. So whenever you go to the skate park, that is his dream day, is what he said. Uh, funniest or best or most interesting story at Perry Park. Um, this is what he wrote. 
I forgot my co-worker's name who I'd known since middle school and didn't remember it until a month later. <laughs> so that's a pretty funny story. Um, unique thing about uh, Jack is he likes to do art, uh, mostly drawing and painting. Uh, most interesting places he's been in were Florida, California, and Maine. Um, like I wrote in here, Jack is a good kid who uh, respects others. Um, first couple of weeks, Jack started back there. I was pretty surprised on how much, how hard of a worker this kid is. I mean, he's not very tall, but he will <laughs> outrun some of the other dishwashers back there. I'm pretty surprised. There was one time I walked back there. I was in my office for a while, but this pit was pretty messy. Came back out. And I look and it was completely clear. And I was like, holy moly, you get that was an hour. <laughs> so um one of the best dishwashers we have. Um he's always asking to do things, always wants to stay busy. So um, you know, honestly, he's a trainer for our new staff now for dishwashers. Um thank you, Jack, for your hard work. Good kid. Cool. And he's Kelly's son, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Overcome a lot. Sorry, everyone, uh, review online. This is Keith. We'll go over uh, golf tournament and handicap um, as well as golf operations, what we've had going on. So, a uh, quick congratulations to our classic champions. That was Bob Patterson and Sid Henderson. Very well done. They got uh, they battled well, and then our fall fall Follick champions, and that was Jim Herbert and Amy Morrow. Two good events, uh, good member engagement on those. The Follick had ninety six members participate, and so great turnout there as well. It was always a lot of fun. Um, continued strong financial performance, as Lori had mentioned. Uh, a lot of the key metrics in the golf operations have. Just done really well this year, and a huge thank you to everybody for continuing to share very hard with your friends and family and bringing out guests. That's that's obviously hugely financially productive, but also um, your support of the golf shop when you're looking for your merchandise. So, um, of course, there's always golf gear like polos and stuff like that, but certainly your support on hard goods. If you're buying golf clubs, you might as well buy them from your own golf club. Somebody's making about $150 in the driveway, and it might as well be the club you are. <laughs> There's this PJ Superstore. So uh, we'll always match the price and make sure that we get the best best deal we can. Um, so thank you for, for that. A couple of reviews on the key metrics that GTH uh, keeps an eye on. So continuing to trend upwards on members complying with our 75% posting rule. So last month we had 190 members in compliance. Now we're at 195. So um, any progress is good progress there. We appreciate that. What's that, that is, percentage? A member? Um, members that compete in tournament play? Well, no, that or, meet the 75% requirement. Well, that 195 members is relatively low percentage. However, of posting members or members with a gen, that's about half. Okay. However, many of them do not play in tournament play. Right. So we're not really concerned with, with what they do with their posting at that point. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And, um, on our side of the house, is, as you'll kind of see in the golf shop, we'll switch gears, seeing a lot more of our fall outerwear start to arrive, um, getting the summer stuff gear packed up and, and handed over to close out racks for, uh, for our Monday events, and stuff like that, targeting new fall gear coming in. And then we have already begun the buying process for spring of 24. So a lot of times what folks don't quite realize there at the golf shop is a polo that's on the floor in May, is typically purchased in September. So, um, in order to get the styles that are appealing, we buy way in lengths. What that? Or the lengths? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, I figure what fits me fits you. Can I get written up and talking in my shirt? I can talk. It's not the tucking, it's what is it? No comments. 
pace of play. So most of um, August, we didn't have our tenant partial available to us. Uh, we sent those back to give a software upgrade. So they receive better service while on the golf course. It just came back today. So back in play with several non-member groups and, and still a helpful tool there. But we did have a couple weekends where lagged behind and we can't blame that on guest play. Uh, and just to highlight, you know, those in the room pretty active on those weekend mornings. Um, well, we're, we'll continue to, to push and try to be, you know, helpful aids in that pace of play. When it's a Saturday morning and it is nearly 100% members on the tee sheet, guys, it's our responsibility to maintain that pace. You, you know what flow is and how to, how to keep that going and um, just continue to stay up with your, your crew. And I, I know no guilty parties in the room, but just keep an eye on that and do your best part. <laughs> that, that 420 Damn. first round of the day becomes a an issue for the entire day. So, Thank you for your help with that. And then the bottom of the screen, uh, highlighting our tea time utilization report. We'll continue to do this every month. Uh, no surprise, August was busy. August always is. And um, really, our, our Saturday and Sundays, as suspected, the busiest there up until 11 a.m. But overall, pretty darn busy throughout there. Uh, I think that the positive side of this, too, though, is we've seen quite a few of our prime time days where if you were a member looking to find a spot on the tee sheet, you go and draw your club. There's almost always a time within a couple hour window of where you might want to play golf. So very rarely have we been completely booked out this year. Um, I think August, this is the first time we've seen 100% utilization, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Um, of any of the reports we've run this season. Next slide, Gary, are you okay to talk to these points? And I'll take your yeah, uh, Normally, Kelly would talk about this as. Uh, Board member on the uh, GTNH, but he's uh, he's traveling right now. So Keith and I were going to cover. This is around the member tournament, tournament and uh, men's invitational. Now that we're a full, full, nearly full, we've had we've had some board or some members ask us to make sure that we're assuring the tournaments are meeting the needs of our existing members really around the theme of we're one club and we're a member first kind of an organization. The board and GTNH committee and management teams and, um, and many others have been looking at this for since mid-June. We really wanted to kind of wait till the tournament schedule got over to see if we were addressing all the tournament issues, not just one, one meeting or one tournament. Um, we wanted to make sure we understood what the existing formats and registration and perspectives. And we've written these slides here so that you can refer to them later if you'd like to. Um, but we really determined there were two, two actions we needed to uh, take. Uh, to, one, to make sure that we have a variety of tournaments, uh, the tournament formats and the capacity are meeting our members' needs. They're run consistently using a sand, standard set of expectations under the direction and coordination of the GTNH committee. They're annually reviewed for lessons learned, and then what you learn in one tournament is applied to the other. So we're a continuous learning uh, process, and that the tournaments reflect both our culture and our traditions that currently make our tournaments successful. A lot of tournaments have been developed by hardworking individuals and members of the uh, of the uh, golf club. They've come together. They spent a lot of uh, time and effort uh, because they needed to run a tournament. When we did look back, we saw that we didn't have any particular guidance on how to run a tournament, uh, what's required, what needs to make sure it gets accomplished, and that. We've actually reviewed to make sure the tournament accomplished the original goal. So the first action that the board took was to establish a set of tournament guidelines. It's uh, important our golf director is involved, that he's directing the uh, tournaments. Uh, some tournaments have very active committees and some tournaments are run by the pro shop. But in each case, the pro shop is very supportive to make sure that the things happen. Uh, many of the members work around all the 
all the issues to make that sure that it's providing uh, member input to what needs to be part of the uh, tournament, if there's rewards and sponsorships. So it's a joint effort, but to make sure that uh, they're run consistently, the uh, uh, our golf director is, uh, is the tournament director. That tournament director, along with, if there's a committee, the committee chair uh, reports routinely and works with GTNH to keep them informed of uh, the progress. Uh, provide routine updates and through the board or through GTNH and to the board, the golf director provides updates just as he has today of where the activities. So that's the consistency in leadership, the consistency to make sure the tournaments are following all the elements of the uh, guidelines. Each tournament has to be very clear who the format is, who the participants are, when they're scheduled. We have a published schedule for tournaments and the board has said that there's a and there's no more than two weekend tournaments a month so that kind of limits how many tournaments you can have and still have other members that are not playing in tournaments uh, have access to the golf course so it's important that these tournaments are run well they include as many as possible and they also uh, are meeting our needs but there is a limited schedule. So we have we have to fit them in and make sure that they're uh, optimizing that time. Also important that we've set up uh, a post-tournament review. It's important to have everyone involved with that, uh, uh, with the tournament, uh, make sure that we're getting asked the right questions, make sure that those are getting fed back into the committee and also that we get fed back to other tournaments. So it's important to capture from uh, what's going really well and make sure all the other tournaments share from that. In a second action, the board also authorized the uh, Pro Shop, GTNH, and a group of other uh, interested members that have stepped up to form a tournament committee to create a two-man, two-day men's weekday tournament using the multiple tees from 2024 to start next year. Some of the challenges that we've had in both the uh, classic and the invitational is we play from the white tees. Some of our members no longer want to play from the white tees. Uh, so there's a need for a tournament where we can play from multiple tees. So uh, the committee is already uh, getting formed. We're uh, with two board members who have volunteered, Mike Good and Mike Blumbo, to be on that committee. Uh, to make sure that we are bringing another opportunity to have a tournament uh, playing for multiple tees. And so our intent is to deliver that tournament in 2024. The exact format, the layout, we're, we're asking the committee to put that together. And so if you have interest in being involved with that, that's, uh, that's something that uh, will be formed the committee and it will be open for members to join. Specifically to the uh, men's invitational, a lot of discussion uh, with a lot of members trying to capture the history, but also the needs. And so uh, we've made minimal changes to some of that, but we wanted to clarify some of it uh, as all of our, as our classic and the men's invitational tournament has matured. They're both very successful tournaments. Uh, first of all, we do believe uh, in maintaining the first priority registration for the previous year's members participants. That's about 64 tournament, uh, members uh, for the tournament. Uh, historically, we've had about 50 of those resigned back up. The second priority registration has been for members who played two years ago, but did not participate in the preceding year. Um, we are changing that to where members have a one-time option to skip a year. So we respect that things come up, but we do also uh, recognize that uh, that's a one-time option going forward. So if you decide to skip a year, you know that uh, uh, if you need to do it again, then you go back into the uh, open, open application or registration. The other change is the third priority is for members who were on the previous year's wait list, but did not get in. 
So instead, so this will be a biennial wait list. So for those that uh, are on the wait list in 2023, they will be added as the third priority after after the uh, previous year's uh, participants, the ones that have a one year skip, and then they will be on the priority list. That list will continue if you are on the uh, wait list, you don't get in in 2024, you're still on that wait list. Anyone from 24 will be added to that waste list and it will continue. But by doing that, uh, those men's invitational members who are on that wait list do no longer have a classic registration priority. Original uh, intent of the classic being set up was to have the flow over from the men's invitational. It is a successful tournament. It fills out uh, fairly quickly, uh, not quite as quick as the invitational, but in this case, the perennial wait list will be for the men's invitational and they will not be fed over to the classic. This year, we did apply that for the first time in a long time uh, to the classic. Uh, but we'll go back to where it's just the perennial for the men's invitational. Any remaining spots after those three priorities uh, will be determined by a lottery. Instead of the first click gets into it, uh, members will have three days to sign up for that registration for the men's invitational, and then a lottery will come from that. If you do not get in on the um, on that lottery, then you will be added to the wait list and you'll, your priority then will move up as, as the uh, wait list uh, is, uh, fills openings. There are a few more details uh, in the tournament guidelines, but they'll be published, uh, published for you to read. We thank the introduction of the new tournament uh, for all tee boxes and the above changes We'll be addressing the primary concern is that we need more space for people who want to play in tournaments. And so as that committee gets that tournament up and running, then uh, the details of that. But it's also to recognize the history that has built uh, the success of our tournaments. And we want to retain much of that tradition and much of that history. And we think this is a, a solution that will be workable and, and we, we believe successful in going forward. So that's a lot more time on it, but there's more details as the guidelines come out. Um, that's what we had. Okay. Keith, anything on there? Uh, nothing to add. No, I think you, you captured the thoughts and the, the detailed work that the board and the GTH committee uh, put into that. Thank you, Gary. And I want to thank the uh, members who have brought the uh, app for the uh, review, also the members who have stepped up and and shared their thoughts. This is going into a lot of members have been involved in uh, coming up to the solution. Been in between you guys. I can't see back there either. It's because I'm too short. Um, <laughs> hey, good evening for those online. Uh, Jason here We're with uh, Grounds and Greens. Um, pretty positive. Late August and a, and a good start to September for us. Uh, we're really, really in daily maintenance mode right now uh, with the bulk of the tournament schedule As having passed by. It's uh, more routine maintenance. Uh, we're able to get out there, do some minor projects, and, and catch up on some cultural practices like airification of the fairways. Uh, most of those have been completed in terms of solid time airification. Um, a few more minor areas here, high traffic areas that we'll hit um, as we go through the next couple of. Well, the next couple of days actually before we return to the machine that we are presently borrowing. So, but all in all, uh, pretty positive feedback. Appreciate the members filling out the surveys and the responses with the, the surveys on course conditions for uh, Q3 here. Um, from a staffing perspective, still down two full time seasonal staff members. Uh, most golf courses and most country clubs in the area are in a similar situation where they lose the high school and college kids. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but uh, we're having a tough time uh, filling those voids and basically the salaried staff, I'd like to really acknowledge Jonathan and Mike for stepping up and, and really doing a lot of those tasks. And uh, what we've really been proud of is it's the interval in between tasks that get stretched for us. It's not reducing a certain task that gets completed. So 
Um, that's where we stand from a staffing perspective and, and of course, conditions update. Uh, from a project standpoint, uh, excited to hear the results back for the cart path on number 15. Um, the spillway repair, I reached out to five contractors. So we have uh, construction documents out to them looking for proposals to come back so that we can get that hopefully underway here uh, early Q4 of this year. Um, that being said, what you will witness uh, at the, probably the middle of October is we will start reducing our capacity in the lake. That's a requirement from the dam safety board is reduce the volume of water that we're restricting back or holding back um, as our capacity to, to alleviate any potential um, hiccups that we may develop or it's just the safety precaution. So we, you will see what the water level is dropping. Um, that's not a major concern for me. Uh, we, we should be pretty good. We'll be down to about two foot below where we were last year at this time with the potential of doing that project. Um, you know, that's that's really that's really it. I do have the the practice area is evolving. It is growing in well. It's still not ready yet. So we do not have a solid open date for that. Uh, we'd rather have it in good condition and viable condition before opening it early. And that said, the car path on number one, hopefully everyone's enjoyed driving up that. Uh, we do have some signage on it that states it is one way as we would not want you to lose control coming down that. Uh, but that also that the fence that's there is there as a safety precaution. So, any questions? Uh, Jason, I have a question. So you have the rainfall total there yes. uh, for year to date. Yep. How does that compare to average for versus year to date? And what is average rainfall for the for a year? Good, good question. Um, I catalog that, but I don't have a solid answer to give you. I would say we're above average on rainfall. We're below average on what we're what we've received in Capital Rock. I think they're at 26 and almost 26 inches. So we've been fortunate that we haven't caught those big thunderstorms, but we are above average. And I'll get you that number. You want to, you want to mention okay. the uh, weather station? Okay. Yeah, so uh, Mike and I have been talking about um, identifying purchasing a weather station that would give us local uh, local weather. So that's something that we're going to move forward with. Uh, there are options on Weather Underground. There are several stations in the park that you can check. There's one in particular off of uh, number nine that I check quite a bit, just as a comparison to our existing weather stations. Uh, our current weather stations on property don't have the, I'd say the software protocols to transition over to a web platform like Weather Underground, where that would be accessible to everybody. Uh, but look for that and some information on that. Over the next couple of weeks, we're hope hopefully we can get that up. Just for those of you that are traveling outside the park and want to have a better understanding of what the true conditions are. Okay. Thanks, Jason. That is over here. Um, so I'm going to give a talk. So right now, um, well, as of the end of. August, uh, we are at 313. As of today, we're at 315. So that is one of them. We have a few resignations in October, so that will fluctuate. But um, top three updates uh, one for golf acquisition and a professional uh, in August. Transfers one social to full, one out of area to full. And then these were the initiation fees, but Bob mentioned the new fees earlier tonight. Uh, this is some breakdown of our membership classes. Um, full equity to 15, um, in social, 206 plus centennial social, 10 or more. So we're hitting right around 216 in our social memberships at the end of August. We did have some resignations in September, but we're creeping toward that 200 mark. Um, as far as resignations, uh, we had a variety of reasons, and we did have quite a few. Uh, sports social, two prepaid, that was just a previous membership class that we don't offer anymore, two out of area, a designee, a full, and a professional. Uh, for the professional wait list, we do have five families, um, and they are a social social members. Uh, for as far as retention, we've got some members that moved, 
a membership that's no longer offered, um, didn't use just a variety of reasons that we keep track of. As far as our uh, resignation percentage, we're right on track for the year. Um, we we're sitting at six and that's pretty average for where we are. So last year we had less resignations. So we'll see how that trends. This is the time where lots of members do tend to resign toward the end of the year. We'd like to welcome our new members, Ray and Angel Braithwood and Joan and Rory Wilgig. And then also thank you to Rich and Annette Briner who referred um, the Wilgigs. Or so the marketing, um, the new application is live. We have single sign-up forties, and uh, members are making dining reservations. Uh, we converted from a CRM database, which is just a big system to keep track of all our leads, and we've converted from one system to another, which is a lot more user-friendly and available to reach out to the leads um, at a faster pace. We would send a promotional email. Uh, currently, we've got five. 1,500 leads in our database, and those include people who are currently looking for memberships and then people who maybe had reached out in the past few years, but maybe it wasn't the right time for them. We are running a full and junior special, which means if any golf member joins now for the initiation fee, they will wait, we will waive all dues and minimums until April 1st. So it's running really well. The membership's looking really great. Uh, I believe we tripled our budget for golf so far in September. So excited to see how that's gonna end up. Um, it's not sure if you, anybody remembers these scrollers from 2019, but they're big guys. And if you have one, you can reach out to me if you'd like to order one, but you can fill them up at the bar uh, for $20. So uh, let me or Kevin know. All right, any questions on anything so far? Um, there was a question that came through in the chat, not regarding membership. Um, anyone want to talk about internet on the course? Yeah. You can talk about it. You're being eight. Either one. <laughs> Do it. Uh, are we okay with the member? Nothing wrong yeah. with the Let's just hold that till we get through the rest of okay. these. Sounds good. Good evening, everybody. This is Chef Justin. Um, Evan Brown with us tonight. He also. Um, for the kitchen, I am working on a new menu. I did present it to the house committee uh, last week, and we will be rolling it out at the end of September. Some of the new items would be a charcuterie board, slate, Mediterranean salad, uh, chicken and pimento, chicken and pimento sandwich, and a mountain burger. Um, and then I'm also putting the Memphis ribs on the menu. Um, so we can have that all winter long. Uh, trout almond dean is another item. Um, last week we did have a health inspection by Douglas County and it went great. We um, had very little violations. Um, just a couple items uh, to note was some dented cans and um, cold holding food over at Max's, and then a couple ventilations um, hood had some grease on it. So I think we did pretty dang well. And shout out to Kevin and his team to help out um, with the health inspection. Great job, great job. So, um, tell, tell everybody, what did the uh, inspector tell you? Exactly. He said this was the cleanest kitchen she's been in the whole, because uh, Douglas County just took over the actual um, health inspections, moved from Tri County, and she said it was the cleanest kitchen she's been in this year. Wow. So, okay. On another note, we are still hiring for a PM cook and looking for a dishwasher. Um, we have always struggled here at Berry Park to get uh, any type of cook out here. Um, just because of the, the location and, um, you know, where we're at. So, but, uh, you know, they can come and work with Chef Justin and the team. And um, so if anybody knows anybody out here in the uh, Perry Park area that's looking for just a part-time job or um, has some cooking experience, uh, send them our way. Um, and then I'll let Kevin talk about the front of the website. Thank you, Jennifer. 
Uh, good evening. Uh, Kevin Brown here and reporting for front of the house operations. Uh, we have our jam reservation system that's been implemented for about a month now, uh, and things are going really well. Uh, members have been very receptive, uh, along with staff, to the training process and the uh, implementation of the reservation system. Um, so members now have the ability to make a reservation online, uh, and we haven't seen any uh, issues with that right now. Uh, the members that uh, have taken the time to do the online reservation have given nothing but positive feedback, uh, stating that it's very easy and seamless. So we're very happy with that uh, and with the team's ability to learn that new technology uh, very quickly. Uh, just reporting back, uh, last couple of months have been very busy along with September. Uh, we have a lot of member events, uh, private member events, and weddings, so we still have four more to go for the year. Uh, two full club uh, weddings and two partial. Uh, Caitlin actually sold uh, another one in October, uh, which is great. Uh, so uh, things are going well for our department financial. Uh, covers, um, reporting back on last year's cover count from August to this year, uh, we gained 574 uh, covers, which is people in our area either having a beverage or a meal. Uh, and last but not least, uh, Paul Groshens, who's in the room tonight, uh, front of the house manager. Uh, he's adapting well to Perry Park. Uh, he's given nothing but positive feedback and he, he loves the work environment. So uh, happy to see uh, our department be much more stronger in the sense where we're more polished and uh, looking uh, at bigger and better tasks for our area. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next slide. Any questions? Uh, does the weddings contribute to the F and D bottom line? Absolutely. Most definitely. Uh, very much the initial fee that you pay to secure the facility, where does that go? Uh, well, it's allocated to uh, the food merit budget. Okay. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Bob, I would guess I would answer it this way, okay? So, if we, uh, like this year, we're ahead of budget, I'll have to be as we mentioned earlier. But so we will probably finish the year, you know, with a uh, operating deficit for total F and D of probably 5%, okay? <clears throat> Just so you know, the average for, for, for a club is, is closer to. 15%. In other words, it's viewed as an amenity or somewhere in that ballpark. Without that wedding revenue, okay, that that deficit would would, would be roughly 25%. So in other words, it, it, it really does make a significant <laughs> contribution because for two factors. So you mentioned the site fee, which is largely pure profit. However, because we charge more, which I think you probably know this, yes, sir. have you changed the what? <laughs> Pay more. <laughs> so it was fifteen hundred dollars a few years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and we do keep our well, plus we also charge more for the food and drinks for weddings because they're outside people, right? Sure. So the um, so therefore our margin just for the day of revenue, which you know, in other words, the food. The wine, the the other alcohol is like I, I just did the math earlier. It, as far as is over forty percent just for that portion of the revenue on the money. So that's another reason why it, it it makes it attractive. So not only do we make a lot of money just the profit on the site fee, but also the day on revenue is also very attractive from a margin perspective. I wasn't complaining. I just wanted to understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and just to follow up for uh, October's uh, events coming up, uh, we have a, another cornhole tournament that hopefully we can get in with good weather uh, at the beginning of the month. Uh, live music from the Old Crusty Nostrils, which is hosted by uh, Martin Cole and his buddies, uh, all our Perry Park members. Yeah, Mark Cole. Yeah, uh, yeah. Orin Swift Wine Dinner. So really interesting wine, elegant wines. We'll be doing a, an event uh, pairs of those wines. Uh, Justin's going to create an awesome menu with that as well. We'll have a sommelier here to speak to the wines. Uh, Oktoberfest is coming up. Uh, that's a really popular event last year, uh, which we did a really good job. We're going to continue that trend. 
uh, as to uh, offering uh, a beer event. Uh, and last but not least, uh, a poetry dinner with Louis, uh, who will be uh, reciting his bottom acoustics. Great. I thought he does okay. another course every day. <laughs> <laughs> he works he more on the acoustic part. <laughs> All right, guys, um, uh, anything else, Kevin? So our comment is about the timeline for course internet. Timeline for course internet was a question that was posed online. So we talked about this a little, uh, I think last month, but we've asked the Metro board uh, to help us with this issue since this is a park-wide issue for having cellular coverage. If we can get cellular coverage, then we can leverage that for our internet here and to uh, give us some Wi-Fi uh, connections out on the course, which is a key improvement for us. They are making some progress. Uh, we've written a letter in support. Uh, Nate wrote a great letter for that to support the effort, as well as we're looking for other entities and Metro Board will be reaching out to have members uh, of Petro, uh, Met Perry Park uh, to also write letters to support this. This is not a short-term solution. It's probably going to take a bit of time. Uh, they just haven't been here because they don't see the market yet. So any, any ideas people have, uh, Metro Board, uh, I think that's being run by Steve Ochowski. Steve Ochowski. Steve Ochowski. So uh, provide him some comments. But that's kind of the progress we're making. We're, we're trying to leverage Metro Board because it's a more of a park solution that we can leverage versus us having to bring in our own Wi-Fi solution to ourselves. But we're still looking at options in, on that as well. You know, yeah, I'd like to add a comment to that if I, if I could, as far as you're saying that I appreciate as far as the direction we're taking in terms of ensuring that the metro district sort of takes the lead on this project i mean as you as you correctly point out as far as the while it would it would be nice to have on the golf course this is actually definitely something for all of perry park and i don't, I don't think you know we still have the majority of the members that don't live in the park and shouldn't be and should not be putting the bill for uh wireless for the park for the park yeah right well, I think from a club standpoint, it's a liability issue because if something happens mm -hmm. somewhere, you know, out in the in the uh, extremes, and, and I'm not saying liability, but I'm saying it's a uh, it's an issue that it somebody is taken sick yeah. or it's an emergency yeah. or whatever, and, and we can't get help, and uh, and that that to me, uh, you know, should drive the priority up. And that absolutely. was the key point in Nate's letter to highlight the need for emergency services quickly. Yep. Any other comments? I'd like to make comments. Okay. You know, I've, I've been a uh, been playing here since 1985. I was an Ohio State member since 1999, full member in 2008. I want to say this is the best combination of board members and staff that I've ever seen. I want to congratulate every one of you. I go around the room and I look at Lana. Lana used to run the carts. Every assignment she's ever been given, she's been outstanding there, in including her current assignment. You you wonder, you wonder, you wonder why F and B is doing well. It's the continuity, the sustainability of your chef. We don't have turnover there. He's guiding this. And that's why the food is so good and the service is so good. You got the can do man over here. <laughs> Kevin doesn't wave his arms, doesn't oh, behind the scenes, just gets it done. You've got Jason, who even my best friend, my really good friend, <laughs> Justin would say, it excels even above Jason, Justin's abilities. You go around, my granddaughter got married here. If you want a testimony, she was absolutely superior in what she did for that. It's just been an outstanding combination of great people that have 
contributed to the bottom line of what you see. Appreciate the uh, your dedication as, as uh, board members. I hope that help these guys, two of them in the room, right, will appreciate the dedication and the contributions that all of you have done for the last several years. I think to add to that, I think Nader, about, I think Nader is, uh, you know, oh, Nate. That's what I think. You know, Nader is no guy in the back. <laughs> You yeah, got it all for the you. Gene, you got it. I'm sorry, I admit this. You have to have everything, Bob. Delorean. When my granddaughter got her wedding here on July 8th, this guy was like one of the higher houses. He cleared the chairs, brought the tables out, did all the stuff that everybody else was doing as your GM. And when my, uh, my wife's sister and her husband were you know, disabled and couldn't move much. He's the guy who brought the car down and got him in the car and took back the car. The, the, the above and beyond, there were a lot of other things that happened. Like my granddaughter wanted to take pictures and all I had, had all that equipment out there redoing. He said, I can't have that in the background. He said, I'll take care of it. They moved it all. Anyway, can do guy too as well. Very fortunate to have him. He looks great doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor, let's get up and go have a drink. Uh, Aye. 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 Aye.